Right, good afternoon, and thanks for clicking on to the Monday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. We're back to a new working week once again, and it is rather autumnal out there. Wind and rain is associated with an area of low pressure to the northwest. That has really been the case right the way through the majority of August. In fact, when I was actually writing down, I manually uh, write down my, my statistics and my figures for uh, my weather station, and uh, I noticed it's been a rather windy month overall. I think uh, there's been many days where we've had wind speeds uh, in excess of 30 kilometers per hour, and uh, that has been the mainstay. In fact, today is the least windy day all, since all the way back to the 1st of August, when the temperature also reached the second warmest levels of the the summer. Uh, 23.1, to, to be honest, uh, is pretty low. Um, so that was back on the 1st of, uh, of August where we had, um, I think it was only 16 kilometers per hour. Today, I think it's around 18 kilometers per hour. But generally speaking, it has been uh, a rather breezy, if not windy month, uh, especially the further north you go. And I um, wanted to show you this uh, sea surface temperature anomaly chart, first of all, because a couple of things that stand out quite nicely uh, and I'll end with the cold waters to the north of the UK here in, in just a second. But uh, you can see here the um, the upwelling caused by Ernesto in the last several days, causing this trail of anomalous cool waters here. So this is essentially the passage of Ernesto churning up uh, deep, wa uh, colder waters up to the surface. And you can see this kind of legacy, uh, this wake of cold waters you can also see the same thing generally with the uh, the in the uh, due, due to the passage of Typhoon Ample in the West Pacific that came very close to the Tokyo area in recent days. I'm going to try and um, have a look at that in, in a day or two, looking back at the uh, at the impacts that Ample had on the Tokyo and the uh, Greater Honshu region, and then um, the the other standout area of cool is just to the northwest of the British Isles in Ireland. Now, the reason for this is we've had low pressure almost permanently positioned between Iceland and Scotland. Therefore, we've had quite a lot of winds coming in from a west to southwesterly direction through the majority of the month. And that has allowed this waters to cool to the northwest of both Ireland and the British Isles here. So a few standout areas, uh, both the tropical as well as baroclinic low pressure systems uh, causing the upwelling but look at how warm the rest of the north atlantic is and this is the big concern for the hurricane season especially in the uh, the mdr between the uh, africa the caribbean up into the gulf of mexico we've got ridiculously warm sea surface temperatures in this region here and that has to be uh, taken into consideration but this is the upper air chart for the first 11 days of the month and, and there's not really been a great deal of change may i add all the way up until the 19th, we've had a deep anomalous low just to the south of uh, of Iceland. We've got um, stronger than average pressure, Iberia, France, into the southern UK. So it's really been a story of wetter, windier and cooler across the north, warmer, drier and less unsettled across the south of the UK. Hence why we've seen the cooling taking place to the northwest of the British Isles due to low pressure. A uh, couple of other interesting little things to point out. This was a tweet here by Alex Deacon of the Met Office. Um, always enjoy Alex's analysis, whether it be the deep dive um, or other videos associated with the Met Office. I really greatly appreciate Alex's uh, work and analysis and explanation of things. But uh, he, he took this photograph here. I think this is back to uh, last night. So um, he tweeted this out around quarter to ten in the evening. Um, last night and it, the, the incredible orangey ready pink sunset over Devon it, due to the wildfire smoke in the atmosphere uh, that has been causing some very dramatic sunsets in fact across many areas due to this trail of, um, of wildfire smoke extending from Canada and getting driven along by a pretty strong jet stream at the moment and it's reached the UK and Ireland, causing these incredible sunsets and quite smoky skies, actually. I think um, it was um, another tweet I've seen uh, saying that it reminds them of Ophelia just days before Ophelia, uh, back in 2017, struck as an ex-hurricane, ex-tropical system, brought uh, severe gales, uh, 100 mile per hour winds, in fact, off the Irish coastline, I think 90 mile per hour 
on the coast itself. Very, very strong system that uh, blew ashore across the UK and Ireland back in October of 2017. And this actually reminds it. It's James Peacock, in fact, based down in Hampshire, that tweeted that. And it's interesting that we have got our NESO set to become entrained within a, a deep area of low pressure up near Iceland. That the remnants of that, the energy associated with our NESO, will get drawn into the circulation and then increase some wind and rain late this week, Thursday into Friday, will be the time frame for that. But interestingly enough, I'm kind of digressing slightly here, but this is a close-up of Alex Deacon's photograph and you can actually see he, he puts a circle around it looks as if you can actually see in his photograph taken by his phone of a sunspot on the surface of the area of the sun so that is pretty incredible stuff and I wanted to actually share that with you in today's video because I thought that was pretty cool to see so anyway a couple of other interesting little things here in the last few days, we've we've seen the, the flooding in parts of southwestern Europe in recent times. we also seen the Mediterranean sea surface temperature reach a new heat record. The average sea surface temperature just hit, and this is uh, going back a few days here by Scott Duncan. In fact, it's back to the 11th of August, but they, I forgot to actually share this with you. This is back on the, on the 11th of, of this month, that the average sea surface temperature within the Mediterranean basin was 28.15 Celsius, uh, 18 out of the, the top 20 hottest days in the Mediterranean sea surface have been observed in the last 13 months alone. And we know how warm the sea surface temperatures are within the Atlantic and the other, uh, um, other parts of the world as well. So I thought I would share that with you because it was quite staggering to see that, um, that sea surface temperature anomaly being breached yet again. I'm just trying to see if there was a couple of other things that I wanted to kind of point out to you before we get into today's video um, in, a, in a, a more detailed way. This is a, a obviously associated with the wildfire smoke getting entrained within the jet and essentially that smoke then get tangled up within an upper trough, an upper level area of low pressure over the Great Lakes. It then engages with energy off the jet stream and then it gets uh, drawn speedily west, uh, eastwards here, uh, uh, essentially right on the jet stream itself and then pushed across the UK and Irish airspace. So again, a pretty cool uh, graphic there showing that the wildfire smoke getting drawn across the Atlantic Basin. This is a tweet here by Ben Knoll showing the upper oceanic heat content remains at record levels across much of the deep tropical Atlantic. And uh, this is obviously a concern as we go into the real meat and bones of the hurricane season. So it's obviously uh, mid-August right the way through till about uh, early to mid-October. That is the core of the hurricane season. And when you've got all this uh, incredible fuel, not just at the surface, but deep below to tap into. And we know that the models are suggesting that activity is going to increase. This is the real concern later down the road. So anyway... Current satellite imagery loop of uh, weather online looks like this here. There's that area of low pressure, one of multiple lows that have been positioned just to the south of Iceland during the course of August. Lots of strong winds on the south and eastern, eastern flank of the circulation allowing that waters to cool at the surface due to that wind energy constantly blowing from a west to southwesterly direction here. But this has been keeping Ireland, Northern Ireland, Scotland England, uh, western portions of England and north, southwest areas, Wales as well, generally cloudy with outbreaks of rain. Notice here down to the south and southeast, it's largely high and dry. In fact, there is the wildfire smoke seen on visible satellite on this loop. As you can see here, this is kind of dirty, brownie colour uh, associated with the uh, winds, very strong in the mid and upper levels. Uh, a jet stream level crossing the Atlantic. So isn't that amazing to see that actually? But notice that the far south and southeast of the UK is generally high and dry, hence where we see the warmest temperatures, 24, possibly 25 Celsius being achieved. We're currently sitting as of 4.30 in the evening, uh, 23.5 at Weybourne. We've got Norwich Weather Centre at uh, 24 Celsius. Um, and we've got a few 22s, possibly 23s down towards Kent, uh, up into Essex, etc. Much fresher conditions where it's cooler, cloudier, and windier. 
uh, in the Wales, southwestern England, northern England, much of Scotland uh, on, on the fresh side here, Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. We've got a couple of low 20s um, in the Midlands part of Ireland, south and east as well here. And uh, this is the current radar image of the chart as well here. So you can see lots of heavy rain getting driven in on a west to southwesterly wind associated with that low to the northwest. So a very, very wet day indeed, and it looks as if we're going to continue to see more systems one after the other feed in. Now, the reason for that is we've got quite a strong temperature gradient to the north over Greenland and over the North Atlantic. We've got a lot of warmer within the subtropical Atlantic and the tropical Atlantic. But to add a, an extra boost to the strength of the jet stream, we throw Ernesto into the picture. That system looks as if during the course of today and into tomorrow is going to make its closest approach in Newfoundland and then take a turn, grab a ride in the jet stream. But notice here that as we see Ernesto moving north, northeastwards, we've got this very chilly air um, associated with a trough uh, over, great, the, over the Great Lakes, getting drawn that colder air down over the eastern side of Canada. At the same time, we've got tropical air getting lifted north. As these two air masses merge, you then increase the strength of the jet stream. Then that will push Ernesto very quickly eastwards over the North Atlantic, keeping that gradient quite tight in terms of temperature. Therefore, the jet stream winds are going to be nice and strong. And the system, notice here, we've got an area of low pressure just to the south of Iceland. The latest system, by the way, because it's not the one that we've got at the moment, just to the south of Iceland. It's essentially a conga line of lows moving off Greenland towards Iceland, towards the northwest UK. Always higher pressure the further south you go. But once we get towards the Wednesday time frame, you notice here that the system it never really truly connects up with the low and become a larger, deeper system. It looks as if the GFS keeps these two features uh, separate. And then we've got a lobe of cooler air getting drawn into the UK and Ireland, hence why it looks as if the majority of the rest of this month is going to be somewhat on the cool side. Looking at the latest uh, overview chart here of the ECMWF, uh, you can see here that we've got an area of low pressure that is moving in during the course of today. So uh, we've got the main current low just to the south of Iceland. We've got another system on the southern, more further south into the base of the trough here. Uh, quite strong gesturing winds associated with this in the upper levels as well. That then all pushes from west to east during the course of today. Then the main area of low pressure itself kind of dumbbells its way over the northern half of the UK, filling as it does so. Then Ernesto, the remnants, it, no longer a hurricane at this stage, moves uh, into the picture here, rides the northern flank of that, uh, that mid-Atlantic ridge of high pressure, and essentially it just deepens the trough. As I've been highlighting for the best part of a week now, that uh, the system just to the south of Iceland and the remnants of Ernesto essentially just kind of deepens the, 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 the mid and upper level trough that we've got anchored in place here. So therefore, we've got a rather cool, wet, windy uh, end to this working week and uh, possibly into the weekend as well. We've got an, an yet another system that kind of, it kind of spins around this trough in the, in the northeast Atlantic here. And then we're kind of left with the west and northwesterly winds persisting into the start of next week here. So these are the final days of uh, of August here. Looks as if we may see a subtle shift westwards in the trough. That would possibly indicate that we get something a little bit warmer, higher pressure trying to move in from the from Iberia and France towards the very final days of the month. But we'll wait and see what happens. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you all being well tomorrow with more. Bye for now.